Okay, now this is great. I'm really glad to have you here because I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time to congratulate All you right. on being part of that marvelous Colors Project. Why, thank you. Which I think is a major work of art <coughs> in this year of 2006. I congratulate you on that. And I'm looking forward to this very much and welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations where it's a great pleasure to welcome to the program Nate Conrad, or also known as Yellow, and Nate is a well. He's a he's a he's a web designer and he's a computer engineer and he's a, a whiz, as it were, uh, in terms of things cyber. And he's also one of the founding members of a very creative entity here, the shows in, in Manhattan Network called the Colors Project. And he happens to be Yellow. Perhaps some of you will remember him in his personage as of Yellow, in that. And uh, he's, a, he's a very interesting fellow, and I've been wanting to talk to him for a long time. And Nate, Yellow, welcome yes, very much to the conversation. Thank you. All right. Great Thanks, pleasure. Howard. Yeah. Excellent. So How's like I said, I said to you before, uh, we, we like to share, uh, maybe you could share as Nate, okay? We sure. can talk Yellow, Nate, and we're going to show a clip yellow, of the colors. Yellow, Yellow, Nate, yeah. Yeah, right. Anyway, Yellow's a little older than Nate, actually. Oh, Nate, no. Nate, yeah, you've been well, Nate all your life, haven't yellow's, you? Yellow's 570 years old. What? Yeah. I don't know. Well, really? Yellow yeah. comes, where did Yellow come from? Oh, because Prudentia. He's pr yeah. From Prudentia. He's, he's right, right. crash landed here we're on planet Earth. We're going to go into all that all right. in a little while, because we're right. going to show a clip of that. It's, it is data art at the highest form. It's great. It's Academy Award stuff. But anyway, Great. share with us, Nate, okay? okay? Nate Conrad, and you are a cyber whiz, are you not? I, sure, I uh -huh. absolutely. I do a lot of uh, computer work. Uh -huh. I do, I design websites. Uh -huh. um, I've recently designed a, sh a site called Art Life Collective, okay. which is a site, it's an art gallery, it's a uh -huh. collective, right. where people, any artist can go and upload um, a t-shirt design. Uh -huh. And it's added to the gallery, and uh -huh. they create their own little page, and right. they have their own section. And they cr add a bio and um, little information about and themselves, in and yeah, yeah and uh -huh. and and basically, <coughs> they um, when they submit artwork, it's right. added to the gallery, and right. people can shop for it, uh -huh. and they can select a. a the design that they want right. and it appears on a t-shirt and right. they can select a color and it shows them what the color is and they can pop up the design to see it close up and you can actually shop and build your own t-shirt so you great. create for your own artists. thing for artists, absolutely right? it's for really artists great, yeah. and the artists all share in the profits all right yeah it's definitely you share, right well the, yeah so they get a pretty good a makes 200 sales and artist b makes no sales no they, well you, uh, you how get do you work that out well you get basically uh, they share the they car. share in the profits with the company oh with the Company, they share you're the company. No, no. no I just the designed the site. You designed the site. I designed right? the site. John, oh, okay. actually, John, John. Uh, Kowalski did the programming, oh, and yeah. I did the design. John's another. He and I, we collaborated on that. You one collaborated together. on that, yeah, and yeah. the colors project, along with. Oh, Kirsten, we, we right? do a lot of. Well, she didn't. She didn't have anything to do with that yeah. website, but she has a lot to do with. We're the getting show. ahead of ourselves. A oh bit yeah, here. I was just a little smidge. I only got a chance to get, and also I wonder if you could because you're in cyber and all that. But could you share your own background? Where you were drug, were born and raised and drug up and that kind of thing, education, that kind of thing. Sure. As Nate Conrad, as cyber Nate, was, yes. uh, well, I am um, theatrically uh, moving kind of character. On sure. Your, yeah. I uh, I was born in New Jersey. Okay. You know, I've never lived a day of my life in New Jersey. Really? Yeah. Um, and okay. shortly thereafter, so you were um, born and you went the very night night. You went right. To well, right you know, okay. Okay. Maybe a couple of days. A couple of couple days. Couple of days. We were living across the river in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. And a uh, beautiful town, and uh, back then it was a really exciting artist community. Um, Wait a minute, you were born in New Jersey, where? Down south? Flemington. Flemington, where is that, south? Is that uh, South Jersey or south? Ca kind of, you so know. So you're not right across the Hudson River in New York City area? No, no, so no. You weren't born there, you yeah. were born there, okay. Kind of uh, Bucks County. Bu oh, Bucks County, Bucks beautiful, County. Yeah, it's great, absolutely. yeah, it's great, okay, okay yeah. Uh -huh. And so uh, we, I lived there for a very short amount of time. And uh, my mom took off uh -huh. and uh, joined a religious cult and religious took me cult. with, with yeah. her. And we traveled around the country um, what, what through my formative years. I don't years. mean to pry. What oh, she just, she just up and left. Oh, really? So, yeah. And um, so the That's adventure began. That can be pretty traumatic. I was pretty young. So, uh, you know, you I didn't really. Pretty young. You're talking uh, infant uh, or five? Maybe six? one. Maybe That's two, very one two, That's you know. Very young. Yeah, my memories are very, yeah, you know, minuscule. That, right? Yes, yeah, okay. or maybe a little older, maybe like three or four. Actually, three or four. Yeah, four yeah. hundred years. Yeah, okay. And uh, from there, which religious cult, if I could? Uh, the Divine Light Mission. The Divine. I don't know that one. It's no. kind of uh, Indian no. meditation. Right. Um, uh, 
know, the Guru Maharaji. It's they've changed their name. They've kind of rebranded themselves, Guru actually, Ma in a way. Guru, Guru Maharaji. Yeah. No, okay, I don't know him, but okay. Oh, yeah. well, you know, I don't really know him all that much either. Okay. It's not anything that I've really... It was a new age thing, a new um, age setting? New yeah. Age thing? I mean, your mother was, was into that kind of thing in the yeah. 70s, yeah. right? Okay. So, Do you have any memories of that? Oh, lots of memories. Yeah, really? Oh, amazing Even though you were, yeah, how long were you there? Oh, well, I mean, you know, she's she still, you know, pursues this. It's yeah. A, it's it's oh. based on a series of meditational practices. Okay, okay. And it's nothing that I've ever, you know, um, pursued myself. Oh, uh -huh. So I don't really know too much about it, but... Um, that was a collective context you were in? Um, a little bit. Nurturing you know, we context? Would you remember why warmly and well? Oh, and very yeah. much so, yes. Okay, oh, absolutely. Okay. Communal? Communal, um, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, we lived on a commune for... A, uh, I called it a commune. Yeah. You know, my mom says it was more like a kibbutz. Uh, and that was up in uh, that was up in uh, Montana, uh -huh. and uh, I was in the mountains of Montana in an <laughs> Indian reservation town. Is that where it was located? No, no. it's international. Oh, it is. Oh, it's yeah, a large it's thing. No, yeah, it's a it's a big thing, and um, okay. you know, uh, we traveled all around the country and lived in uh, Colorado for a little mm. while. Well, actually, we lived out and moved out from Pennsylvania out to uh, Mill Valley, California. Mill Valley's great. And eventually across the river uh -huh. or you know across the bay to uh -huh. San Francisco from there to uh, New Mexico Arizona um, staying briefly and actually stayed for a while in Colorado uh -huh. and uh, I went to a school that was a private school that was a part of the you know the, uh, of, the, of the, the, the lack of it yeah oh it was a long time experience it still continues still with continues. your mother and yeah, yourself yeah. do you yeah. still feel related to that um, I don't mean to pride not, 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 not so particularly right. not particularly but it's from that time and everything um, Relates back, and you see she has family. a lot of Extend friends. Do you feel like that's extended family, or sometimes, did you feel like that? Sometimes, you, was yeah. it an extended family context? You had uncles and aunts and things you could. No, not really. Not really. Okay. Not really. As um, in kibbutz, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of. I mean, there is such an ever-changing cast of characters, and yeah. we, you know, I, I had a uh, two sisters along the way, uh -huh. and we would do things like w when we were up in uh, Montana, we hopped in a van and drove down to Los Angeles, and. From there, we drove, took a Greyhound bus across the country to Florida, uh -huh. you know, and stayed there for a while. Is that a relatively young age? At a pretty young age. I mean, yeah, pretty young. Yeah, no more like quantity. Uh, like 15, 16, yeah, No, 17, no. This is all 20? before I'm, like, even 11 years old. Oh, well, this that is, all is young to be traveling years. across oh, the country. Oh, yeah, all like over that. the place. Sort of back up. It was, it, was, it was an interesting context. It's very it's, interesting. It's not your usual suburban thing, uh, right? No, no, not thing, at all. Right? Yeah. It was very uh, moving a lot and everything uh, like yeah. that, right? I think so that was a good country. Yeah, apparently, you oh, come out very well. Yeah. Look at it. It was really yeah. uh, creative, right? Yeah, very creative. Was it a creative, creative context? Or absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and like the private school that I went to that was a part of this, you know, they that taught us. That was part of the, you called it a cult. Yeah, I like the term cult. It's but a they little, don't like it. I like the cult. shock value. What would they call it? They'd probably call, call it, it a uh, movement or a, a, movement or a community, a community yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably cult. You think Jim Jones, you think yeah, yeah and that kind of right. stuff. You think Charles Rush Manson or, yeah. or something or Manson. Yeah, or nothing, yeah. nothing, that's that's nothing all that insidious. You like to invoke that. A little bit. Yeah, Your mother's still involved with it. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Well, it seems to have worked out well with you. How are your sisters doing? Oh, they're doing great. Yeah, uh, one of my sisters is about to have a baby. Oh, uh, yeah. Idea. And uh, the other one is about to, uh, she's living in Chicago. Uh -huh. uh, they're both great. Uh, so both you were well schooled rounded. within the context of the community? For a little activity? while. For, for a little, little while. while. Yeah. Again, when you were five, six, seven, when you were young, yeah. did you go to kindergarten, first grade, yeah. second, and all that? Well, I went to grade? kindergarten there, yeah. and they closed the school down after that. Why? Um, I guess they ran out of funding. Right, okay, that but, could um, happen, yeah. But, you know, this, the things that we learned in school, uh -huh. at that, you know, at, at that school were sewing, um, baking, you know, um, things that were like self-sufficient, you know, uh, ways to make you, you know, grow up a self-sufficient person uh -huh. and, you know, um, and, and very self-actualized. Were the people who made up the community uh, dropouts from a system of the, uh, of uh, upper middle class or something like that? Who Some were of them just were. Sort of doing that? Or were the people who were as hard scrabble? Was it difficult economically or was it... Uh, I think it had leisurely more to do kind of pace that was uh, built upon a sense of security in terms of economic issues. Well, there was practical it's, material. It's not, it's not that, that kind of thing. It's okay. not that kind of thing right. where uh -huh. there's uh, a tight knit uh, community of uh, people who are really supporting each other, uh -huh. and nobody was really surrendering unless they were living in an ashram. Nobody uh -huh. was really surrendering their 
identity right. or their um, their career to it. Uh, you know, it was something that people would augment their lives with, and it's actually a, just a series of meditational practices that people can, you know, um, utilize. And in it order was to it was held together through the person who's this guru. Was that serious? Yeah. Or was the person who was it he's still a, living? He's still living. What's his name again? Guru Maharaji. Maharaji. He calls himself Prem Rawat these days. Did he go around in an airplane? Yeah, lot? yeah, yeah. That's you remember the guy. Oh, no, I've heard of it from yes. other people. Okay. He flies around in an airplane yeah. a lot. He does. Yeah, am I correct in that? He yeah? does. And and uh, there's a, that's a wide following. Very wide. Uh -huh. Several several, like maybe 10, 15 million people. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's a lot of people. That's a lot that's of people. A nation. That's, that's not a that's little a community. That's oh, a yeah. nation. Definitely. How what accounts for his popularity? Do you think on such a large um, scale having had, do you feel a sense of community with him? Have you met him? Do you get along with him? Um, I haven't really met him. Uh -huh. um, Would you want to? No, not particularly. Not particularly. Yeah, okay. You know, I mean, I, f I find the entire thing fascinating. Yeah. But so it, I'm also a little yeah. disillusioned by it, too. Okay. You know? Tell me why. Um, because one of the main uh, ideas about it is that you have to kind of surrender yourself to the guru. And yeah, that's a bit of a problem. It's like the first step of a 12-step program. Right, yeah, almost. Right, yeah. But he teaches you these techniques. Uh -huh. And one of the f and you have to make a series of promises. And one of the first promises is that you'll never teach anybody else. You'll, ne you'll never, you'll never disclose the techniques. It's, it's like the Masonic order, or the they have the. Yeah, I there's certain secret society, skull and bones. Yeah, and they have there's a certain aspect yeah. of that too. What's it? the rationale for not expose, uh, letting anyone else know it? Well, because he's the person who provides the information. Uh -huh. He is the conduit for those techniques. Okay. So they live through him. So it's got to, yeah. So if you want that, you do it. The, uh, are there? They used to have a thing called Scientology with L. Ron yes, Hubbard. Yes. And L. Ron I'm Hubbard. familiar with Scientology. Yeah, so Scientology. It's a little out there. You I know? knew a guy. I knew a guy who was actually cleared by L. Ron Hubbard on the Sea Org. Oh, really? And he was a real serious thing like that. But they used to go, and there'd be people who learn, mm -hmm. and then they called them squirrels when they would learn, and then they would squirrel away and ah. start something. And they got very, very uh, uh, guarding about the. Some people said fascistic in terms of guarding. The yeah. personage of Hubbard. Was it like that with him or not? Uh, I, I don't want you to... I, I don't really know. I okay. don't really know too much okay, about it. I know a lot about... It wasn't that formative. It wasn't that important no, in your business. No, not, not really. Okay. It's nothing that I've pursued on my own, actually. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it's nothing that you can really get involved in yeah. unless you're 18 uh -huh. and you're an adult. Unless you're 18. Yeah, it's not like, you know, the church where they're going to indoctrinate you from the time that you're an infant. It's uh -huh. like, it has a little bit but more to do with But you were embedded in that culture from the time you were an infant. Yes, but yeah. I wasn't. I didn't learn the techniques and uh, go through any you kind of indoctrination. No, you no, never I, went through that step. Right? No, I've no. I've found my own kinds of you know methods for uh, um, exploring other realms uh, that are you know available. Did your mother think it would have been a good idea for you to do that? I'm sure she does. And yeah, yeah, yeah she does and did. I'm sure she. I'm sure she would think. And that. your sister? Did they get involved? No, no, of them. they didn't. Right? Yeah. Okay, it's interesting, yeah. yeah. And uh, so you travel around a lot. Travel around Born a lot. Born in Jersey, but travel all over the place. All over right? the place. In this country, by yes. large, not internationally. No, not internationally. Okay, now what about education? How do you educate yourself? I heard you say you had a school that got um, on finance and stuff. Did you do homeschooling? Were you doing schooling um, in the the in the community in which you happen to find yourself, or what? Oh yeah, sure. eventually after that, I went to public school. You went to public school. Yeah. At, and that's beginning. Let's just say. First, first second, grade, third. Fir yeah, first, second, third. Where? Traveling yeah, I mean, around. You already have to be somewhere well, okay. for the school. Um, you must so have settled down for a while. From so. there, a little bit in uh, Colorado, Colorado, Montana. What town? Uh, Denver. Denver, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then up in uh, uh, Montana, uh -huh. uh, St. Uh -huh. Ignatius in Missoula. Uh -huh. And uh, from there, I took a little hiatus because we were traveling around and, you know, not really... Uh, grounded enough. You so with your mother all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And, uh, you know, wound up in Florida. I think that was the next time I really went to school. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. You didn't go through a normal thing. Most people go to school. They go to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. You know what I mean? Up yeah. to high school and that. Yeah. Yours was a little bit more punctuated. All over the place, yeah. Uh -huh. Fragmented. Fragmented, uh, punctuated. Uh, to a certain punctuated point. Punctuated equilibrium. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to a certain point. Yeah. And uh, at that point, I. Um, you know, I guess that was about fifth grade. 
okay. and maybe sixth grade, around so sixth grade. So you're about grade. five, ten years, ten years old or so, yeah. Yeah, a little older than that. That's normal, yeah. And uh, at that point, I we settled down to a place, and I stayed pretty that much. That was Denver. Just stayed put. No, that was Orlando, Florida. Orlando, you yeah. settled down for a while, went to school in a normal exactly. way. Like school or didn't like it? Um, you know, I was kind of indifferent. You know, I mean, it was something that I had to do. Um, I was interested in certain things. Girls? Um, of course. Yeah, uh, you right. know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that seems but, to be um, something the hormones demand. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and huh? uh, eventually when I got into high school, uh -huh. which was ninth grade, um, I got into the first year of the fledgling video productions program. Okay, because and it sounds like the yellow we know. All right, exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And at that point, uh -huh. the first year, I started entering film festivals and started winning like crazy. And so I got a lot of support from within the um, within the school. Let me know. digress for a minute. Sure. In the family setting with your mother and your sister yeah. there, was it uh, interesting talk around the table and stuff like that, intellectually stimulating, that kind of stuff? Or we would talk about silly content? stuff, you know. We like, would talk uh, about fun, you know. We would make jokes. Make jokes. Yeah, we, it was always light. Were you, you a clown clown? I mean, were you the cl clown <laughs> in the class <laughs> making <laughs> jokes and everything? Yeah, you, I, you know, it's funny. I was telling yeah, some yeah, story yeah. the other day. I, had I don't want to say wise ass, but yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. I was you, never a wise you, uh, ass. Hijinks? Were you performing hijinks and I was trips just, to the principal's uh, office and that uh, sort of thing? Or no? Every no, now and again, but not not so much because I was a little bit more. I just, I would tell funny stories. Yeah, okay. And outrageous funny right, stories. Right, right, right. And right. to the point where I wouldn't be, I wouldn't even be able to finish the story because you, it you would make me so laugh at your own. Oh, exactly. I see, I see, I see. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. it, it was good stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I yeah. remember uh, distinctly yeah. uh, having to stand up in front of class and, yeah. you know, read a story that I had written in creative yeah. writing. Right, right. And I couldn't even finish it. It couldn't you know, it was so I was good. laughing. It was so good. And were they, but the big yeah. question is, were they laughing? They, I think, were or laughing were at the fact that I, I was, was laughing, laughing okay. so much. All right, all right, right, right. I yeah. see, yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, that's good stuff. And so how about you? Were you reading a lot and stuff and everything? You uh, well, when I was a kid. Because you seem to be interested in a lot of interesting yeah. people. Like, you have a great interest in Bucky Fuller, I Bucky understand. Fuller, you absolutely. You can't do hardly better. Absolutely, my kind of absolutely. Opinion. Bucky Fuller. But you've got intellectual curiosities built up there somewhere and everything, and you, okay, yeah. But, yeah. But, you know, yeah. Was it family-based in that? Yeah. Um, yes. Actually, it's funny because, uh, you know, I, during Christmas last year, mm -hmm. uh, me and my mom and my sisters yeah. watched this great documentary. It was like a three-hour documentary on Bucky Fuller. No it was fooling. Just, what it was, was that? Amazing. Who put it together? Oh, goodness. I can't remember exactly Okay. Who. But it was. Put me on to it. Give yeah, me a link I will. To it. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, try yeah. and find a, a copy of it. He My was sister just had a, yeah. a dupe of it. Yeah. And, uh, and your mother would have wanted to watch that. She was. She loved it. She thought it was great. Uh, I mean, we, and we okay. were coming up with ideas. That is serious. That's serious stuff. It's yeah. not just rumor mongering. And, oh and no, it's no, not no. Just, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, right. I, well, we were also thinking about. I mean, one of the things that you know, that came up in the show was his prefab housing yeah, and yeah. this kind of like grain silo thing yeah. that he was doing. Yeah. And uh, you know, I knew some people in Georgia who uh -huh. were doing this and it got me thinking about how brilliant of an idea that is to mm. take a structure like that right. and put it in the middle of nowhere uh -huh. and you can slowly start to build onto it yeah. and you can bring another structure and place that, it and that connect Maxine it to home, it. home was that? Was it yeah, out yeah. of Wichita? It was in Wichita yes. they had, yes. yeah. And uh, you know yeah. he had a, a several different designs. Yeah, he had a lot. Some of them yeah. were like the kind of the arch, yeah. and I think um, you know uh, he had something that was similar to the grain silo. Uh -huh. um, and uh, this was all predating the the geodesic dome. Right. Okay. You know, yeah. so that was like that was the next big step. That yeah. was the kind of thing that he was like, okay, you know, this is clearly something that there's a need for, right. and uh, people are you know this is this is the, like going to elevate. The standard of living across the board yeah, for, for humanity. all of humanity, exactly yeah, thinking comprehensively. Oh, wide. truly. Yeah. And he was—he started out 50 years ahead of his time. He was ready to. Oh yeah. He was, he was on the verge of suicide. Yeah. His daughter died. He was in Chicago. He was a failure, and he had nothing. He was about to cast yeah. himself into Michigan Lake and die. In yeah. The tanks, and he decided, no, I'm going to see what one individual can do mm -hmm. through design to bring improvement to the whole condition. Yeah. And he lived that out. He was 50 years ahead of his time. He projected 50 years ahead of his time. Nature really? figure, yeah. He was really something else. He was doing that very hard in a very hard scrabble way without being very well understood for a good long period of time. Yes. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you know, when you look at him and you see him, he's this very kind of almost 
you know, when when kids are growing up, they yeah. have this idea of like what the the um, the nerd or the Poindexter, yeah, you know, yeah. would be, uh -huh. and this is the kind of person that's picked on, yeah. you know, by who knows people who are kind of ignorant, probably. Yeah. But you look at him, and he's the archetype of that. Yeah. But when you listen to him talk, yeah. and you got to be you got to be able to pay attention. Oh, and you got to yeah. be able to pay attention to some it's really good to have a sense of poetic. high ideas. Yeah. yeah, it's good to have a sense of poetic to listen to him because oh he, yeah. will, he will make he was a kid he will make sentences, but he's comprehensive, so he's inclusive in things, mm -hmm. and he will make a sentence and say people like telegraphic, quick things, brief, right. brief, sharp things. But he would make a thing and he'd connect something else and connect something else, connect something else, connect something else. Mm -hmm. And people are saying, for crying out loud, get a declarative sentence and he's <laughs> connecting something else <laughs> and the omnidirectional this or that. But you know, it always came but back. It would go it full would come circle. back and connect Absolutely. full circle and bring all that into a comprehensive understanding. And that's what it was poetic. It was poetic. Absolutely. Yeah, and you could pick up on that. You've read some of his stuff in that, right? I've yeah. I've read a little bit. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. you know, I mean I'm I'm not a scholar of Bucky no, Fuller, I understand, yeah. But I definitely I think that he laid down the groundwork for some sustainable ideas that are going to carry the twenty first century. Um, through probably half the century at yeah. least, and I, I, could you know extrapolate even further. Well, I think he was a polymath, and 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 I w I would agree with you on that. And uh, like, um, if you go back to the '60s, you're probably sick of hearing about the '60s. But yeah, you go back to the it. '60s and so forth, and you come up to that period of Bobby Dylan and all that thing, Woodstock, that mm -hmm. period of time. Call it the '60s generation. Yeah. And uh, I'm a part of that, or I'm a little older than, but. Um, if there was any, and there was all kind, there were all kinds of people then, who would have had a comprehensive uh, your your uh, Maharishi Yoga. You had all these people, people that were of comprehensive philosophical interests, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of interest in Marshall Vedic, McLuhan, Marshall McLuhan, yeah. Vedic, the Vedic. But I think, and all the uh, people from India and Hindu, and uh, there were a lot of interesting uh, people comprehensively that everybody was interested in, but I think if there was any one person that if all of those, uh -huh. John Denver, all of those people would have said, who in let's say the year 1970, among all of those people, would have most likely said is indicative of the expression of that spirit of that age and everything, he probably would have been more recognized than anybody else there was, including all the people in the entertainment world and so forth. This is a I, very I think, interesting. I think this that's is very really true. And idea. why the youth now the does is, not cotton on to him more than they do is something that I have a hard time understanding, and I think they're going to. The uh, I, I completely agree with you because uh -huh. the '60s seem to be like such a forward-looking period. But if you look at a lot of the art, and mm -hmm. you look at a lot of the themes that are going on, yeah. there's a lot of this kind of return to nature, yeah. and kind of return to the past mm -hmm. um, I thread that is going uh, consistently through the art and culture of the 60s. Uh. And Buckminster Fuller was very much about embracing nature, and, yeah. and certainly not destroying it, and, and understanding that, you know, Spaceship Earth is a, is a living a organism. Term. He coined yes. the term, yeah. Yeah, yeah. brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And um, but he was so um, technologically oriented yeah. and so future oriented, yeah. and you know a lot of the kind of because he a lot of the future. hippies, yeah. a lot of the hippies seem uh. to go, you know, reflecting to the past and reflecting to uh, periods that were um, kind of like you know what they consider to be a time that was more innocent. Well, well yeah. it's like trying to go back to the golden age or something, right? Or, exactly. Or, or, the, or the ancient classics you're going to draw upon in a Renaissance kind of sense, yeah. Uh -huh. And a lot of people got associating in the evolution of consciousness. We're particularly unique in being able to uh, extend our consciousness through technology and make the environment other than in an Eden-like sense is given that most of the creatures address it with, Absolutely. because we can make the world different than it is. And so, if you're looking at a world, and at that time we had a r raging Vietnam and so forth, and there was a lot of what would be called alienation from oh, the absolutely. system in place. Yeah. Serious alienation. I it mean, was about a, it was a pivotal point. Yeah, but I a mean, lot of people identified that technological capability, mankind's role in universe, even with the negative aspects of what our capability was emerging. So they wanted to retreat from that affecting the environment, and that's technology. And they became anti-technological. A lot of people. A did. lot of people did. And that was unfortunate because Fuller was very much in terms of embracing, utilizing, and through anticipatory design science, creating a world where you can allow the good to come out through design rather than through politics. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah.
and but yet, a lot of people and get through their design, through design, through I design. I mean, and, yeah. and using design as the, the shaping and guiding principle of uh, social change as opposed to uh, like a political agenda. I think so, yeah. And that, he, that really he never was particularly political at all. He just said, uh, they called it anticipatory design science revolution. Yeah, and they had, the, nice. they had this, this decade, 1965, 1975, the design science decade. Yeah, and I that was reading a, about this. Yeah, day, that, yeah, that was a very important thing. And that grew into world game, where yeah. they were taking unideologically lardered view of all the trends upon the earth as a system. Yes. And, you know, population trends, new materials, design capabilities. All of these more. are really hot taking topics these for things, me right Taking now. these things into account, non-ideologically yeah. lardered like our uh, CIA intelligence will do when trying to get an idea of the world because they have an agenda. His was to bring the be maximum benefit to the greatest number of people without violating any <laughs> ecological problem. You know, like, taking a broad... How dare project. he? How dare yeah. he? No, like, but that had, that had a tremendous resonance yeah. among a great deal of the... Uh, of the educated population, say around 1969, 70, the time of Woodstock, he probably would be more recognized as a leading figure then in the spirit of that, I would submit, than anyone else, including all the entertaining peoples, including the Beatles and so forth. But why the youth doesn't continue with that, and I think there's going to be a rebirth of interest yes. in him because it's beginning to surface again. I'm glad to see you have had that interest for a while. Well, one of the things that really resonates with me yeah. is, you know, some of the ideas like the population mm -hmm. and the population explosion mm -hmm. and the idea that people have this social agenda to have large families and large families that have large families mm -hmm. create large families that have large families. Mm -hmm. And so this is a trend that is a little bit antiquated to me because it's a kind of socialized agenda mm -hmm. that's born out of religious ideologies mm -hmm. that are based on uh, ideas that were um, designed when people were not as abundant and so the idea of wow. proliferating a population mm -hmm. seemed to be a really good idea because mm -hmm. it was like strength in numbers and you know the bounty well, of, yeah. of a larger population is well. going to mean you know more people to yeah, make things. People say that's the biological purpose to pass on your genes. And a lot and of young men were really were ready to contribute to that in a degree possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but you have to also understand that Being evolution a little from facetious. Uh, oh yeah. no, I understand yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm reading a Richard Dawkins book right oh, now. Oh yeah, yeah, the self-esteem. Uh, the self-esteem. Yeah. I'm reading it right yeah. now, and he it's was an just amazing. In, book. He was just here a little while really? ago. He made a tour here. Yeah. Oh wow. He's really a voice that's worth yeah. listening to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Truly. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that's amazing to me is that you know that is not really a sustainable and um, evolutionarily um, acceptable. Uh, option. Well, any, you brought, you brought up one little thing there that Fuller also addressed when you said there wasn't enough scarcity. Yes. Thing. And he brought up the idea that we were perhaps in a sense uh, to offset the destructive scenario that the technology boded. We just dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and all that. Right. But and we had the Vietnam thing going, but that uh, there is a living reset. We have to move from living. Re and he, he had a, a coefficient of what he called haveness, haves and have-nots that came out of the world game. He was the one, there were others, Murray Books and some people on the anarcho side and others. The idea that we may be crossing after 200,000 years, he thought it was longer, but we know now it was 200,000 years of human existence. We were at a point where we're by the First World War, the technology had done where we could, we could postulate haves versus have-nots on a world system scale. Mm -hmm. We had reached in his way of thinking coming out of history. 10% uh, by the time of the First World War, 20% by the time of the Second of have World nots War. Or have. No, we had had only 10%. Coming out of history was always less than 1% right. in terms of our capability to uh, provide life support for the population right. within an ecological context because it's But just he, a he felt that there's no reason that we can't have 100%. Well, he was talking, if I may, he was talking okay. coming out of history and he said we reached 10% of the population could realistically be seen to be haves. Okay. Relative to 90% have-nots by the time of the First World War, mm -hmm. coming out of where there had been always more have-nots. Most of the right. people were wallowing around in the mud mm -hmm. of poverty without very much technological augmentation. So he said we reached a point where on a world system scale, 20% by the Second World War. That's coming into our time now. It's coming in. And he wrote a copyright of Fortune magazine, I'm sure, in 1952, a 20-year period because this, this graph, 
you'll recognize it in cyber terms the graph was going like this that there were more and more people were able to be seen to be have it was going toward the current and he said a twenty year period of imminent crisis to all human institutions that had formulated within a certain paradigm or context mm -hmm. as we approached and crossed the fifty percent mark within our lifetime so that there would in a certain sense for the first time in evolution there would be material in material terms more haves than have nots in terms of our augmented technological capability through good design mm -hmm. to provide life support for the human population within an ecological context and we would be in a certain sense ontologically transcending scarcity as a reality in which all of our human institutions had it evolved. has been the driving force yeah absolutely yeah. scarcity and now we're and in a period of 1970 that time of woodstock was probably in the fullness of terms i think in time it's going to be seen as year one that's the mm. year that our weapon systems got to the point where they would agree that it would destroy the whole species in mm -hmm. the lethality it's species lethal yes. by the time 1970 not 1945 that yeah. was inflection point. That was 1945, that was but it reached lethal, the species lethal level. Idea. Right. 1970, and that's also the time that we were transcending scarcity according to world game findings. 1970. Yeah. That was a major moment of transformation in the evolution of universal consciousness, and that idea should be picked up by one and all, including the youth. It would seem Absolutely. to me because there's scientific basis, and if that's true. That's the major paradigm shift in the evolution of our consciousness, and it goes all unnoticed by the natural, I mean, the normal political society of what we well, call the Well, nobody's, news nobody's so taking the broad general view. And but really you are. I am. You're starting am. to, and some are. Absolutely. Are some of Absolutely. your fellows, you're young, are some of the fellows uh, taking the same view, or do you think that they could? I don't or know. Could they cop I really to it? don't know. Could they understand it? Could they cop to it? Um, I think that some people Would do. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. I, you know, I do a lot of the, a lot of my own uh, research. I know. Autodidactic. Kind of you know the term autodidactic. Autodidactic. That I'm means self-teaching. Yes. I think it's. I, it, yeah, I, with the internet emerging, it's destined absolutely. to become very important because you follow it along like a hound dog after a fox. Because you're really curious, <laughs> right? You find a you find a, an idea yeah. and you follow the thread wherever it goes. Yeah. And it branches off in all kinds and of different directions. And not because somebody says this is what you have to learn to pass a test to get a no, job to make the money to so you can eat bread. Look at yeah. this. Yeah, right. And <laughs> when you when you find a new idea, <laughs> right. And all of a sudden you have an epiphany. Yeah. It's almost like this part of this you're expanding. Yeah. And you can feel that expansion. Uh. And as you progress down uh. one of those threads yeah. and you start to have greater epiphanies. You start to really, I mean, it becomes, you know, this all-encompassing kind of drive to, yeah, to con right. continue to learn. Right. You know, um, the gargantuan hunger of the mind. Yeah, I like facial. that. That's right. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things when you're talking about the, um, you know, the 60s. And wow. recently I was watching, uh, I guess it was a few months ago, yeah. uh, Black History Month, and I was yeah, watching yeah. some things on PBS about the Civil Rights Movement. Yeah, about and I was thinking about Eye on the Prize. How yeah. Um, yes, yeah. I was watching Eye on the Prize. Great, great and, uh, work of yeah, art. Was great. Yeah, great. I was thinking about what it must have been like, you know, because when you have this idea, when all of a sudden, like, when you think of, um, you know, a, a realization where, mm. you know, you've you've been looking at things in one way, right, right. and all of a sudden you have an opportunity to just catch a glimpse oh. of something different, yeah. and when you see it. Mm. It opens your eyes, and yeah. all of a sudden, it's o like another part of your brain just opens <laughs> yes, up, right. and you can feel it. It's almost yeah. like a physiological yeah. kind of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this was yeah. happening, you know, during the civil rights movement, right, when absolutely. all yeah. of a sudden there was like this new tolerance. Mm. This was ha this was happening on a cultural scale. Yeah, I mean, right. It was happening on oh, a absolutely. completely national scale. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. like all of a sudden everybody's brain is like growing. Yeah, right. And that yeah. was almost like an evolutionary right. leap. Right. You know, uh. I mean. And and not in physiological terms. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe in neurological terms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's debatable. Yeah, oh, but, that's um, that's an interesting question. Yeah. But definitely, I mean, that uh, one of the things that I think is happening now is um, evolution is not necessarily happening in such a physiological way, like you know, yeah. we're losing our tails, or you know, maybe no. you know, um, yeah, we we're losing you know parts of our bodies or anything like that. It's but it's actually technology. happening on the neurological, technological. Yeah, yeah, and and you know using tools and yeah. technology to extend our consciousness, our right. reach, our oh. abilities, oh. you know, our options. Oh, that's right. And uh, you know, I mean, 
I, I connect well, all of Well, that's been unique to together. us over all the other creatures, it seems to me. Beavers make yeah, nests, right? Beavers no, make beavers nests. Beavers make Birds make nests. Birds make nests. Beavers make dams beavers, and stuff. Definitely. And they make a little bit, but they don't change it. We're unique, and we can also take the measure of the universe. Oh, well. And it's a form of consciousness. Is this, is okay. the, you know, we can debate whether right. this is actually more advanced or not, because if you think more about... More advanced than what? Um, okay, the other creatures, uh, or it's all know, one system? Right? Well, John Lilly talks about yeah, the, uh, John Lilly with the, the, the dolphins. Dolphins and, you know, great. He's convinced that dolphins are the most intelligent creatures on the planet. Well, I've had arguments with my son about that. Oh, yeah? You made a definition of intelligence. Well, one of the know, things that I read a few years mm -hmm. ago was uh, that he was convinced, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I, I'm sure he has plenty of data to back this up, oh, but yeah. you know, I wouldn't be able to, to you know, pull uh, it out of my uh, head right now. Uh, but... Um, he was convinced that the do the clicks and beeps that uh -huh. dolphins communicate yeah. in uh -huh. is actually binary holographic data. And that's so yeah, they're that's communicating right. yeah. graphical images to each other. And I don't think they make war. I don't think they do either. I don't either, yeah. And he has yeah. sensory deprivation. He was yes. involved with that because yeah. it gets I, I used into to another... I actually used yeah. to do sensory deprivation. You did? Oh, yeah. You I can experiment um, with a lot of different things. Yeah. yeah. I, I was working, actually, at Tim Leary's website in the um, mid-90s. Okay, and yeah. And he had a sensory deprivation tank uh -huh. on his back porch. Did he? At Millbrook, was that? Or no, no, this no, was in Beverly Hills. Oh, that's right. It yeah, was way yeah, he was in Beverly Hills. Hills. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, this was the 90s, you know. So did you visit there with him? Um, he had just died. Oh, I'm sorry. He had just okay. died. I yeah. got there right after he died. Uh -huh. uh, I started working for his website, uh -huh. um, and you know, you help get that thing up and going. It's still going yeah. good. Yeah. Well, it's actually it's kind of it's you know this was almost a decade ago. Maybe you ought to and go uh, back and give yeah, it another. Yeah, I uh, mind it. You know. Major overhaul. A major overhaul. You know There's how to do that kind of stuff. thing with oh, websites. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. Okay. There's a lot of good stuff in that. You must have picked that up somewhere, but anyway. Yeah. Good. I just kind of I kind of just taught myself. Autodidactic. You know, that's a indeed. term that's going to become yeah. more and more useful, I think, Definitely. because the liberation from the institutions that are trying to prepare people mm -hmm. for doing what they're told within a structure yeah. which is now outdated yeah. is a major shift that's caused revolutions in the past. There's one going on now. may have the benefit of being able to have a revolution where everybody finally can be included in it, yes. which would be a kind of revolution where you don't have to have guillotines. Yeah, thank you. But we're going through a revolution, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, are going through a revolution. And didn'tactic learning by people who are following their own lead rather than being told what to do and trained to be compliant followers of orders with institutions which are outdated is a major shift. Yes. That's coming, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you were at Tim Leary's uh, Yeah, website. I was mm -hmm. working at his website and I would frequent the sensory deprivation tank uh -huh, and uh -huh. it is amazing yeah yeah and a friend of mine also has one here mm -hmm. in the city really? and uh yeah and it's uh you know the orgone accumulator the uh wilhelm reich wilhelm reich yes yeah. I, first I've, program never, I I've never i've never done the first orgone. program i'd I love to sit well, in the first program box. i ever did in this conversation series way back when i just you know and everything was with a fellow named Greenfield who had been at the trial of Wilhelm Reich and really? was a profound student of Wilhelm Reich. Wow. And he had an orgone accumulator. Wow. And I Amazing. did it from, I got inside the orgone accumulator. It's supposed to have orgone energy. And uh -huh. he, so I remember he said, so how is it? It's like a privy. <laughs> it's like a privy. You're a privy. Yeah. And he said, how is it? And I said, well, feels heavy. I remember that. <laughs> but he had all kinds of things about having Amazing. to do with prana and all this kind oh, of nice. stuff. But it was good. Wilhelm Reich yeah, was interesting. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of interesting people, yeah, are going on and they're still continuing. Who are some of the really interesting people now? Howard Bloom. Howard Bloom. Talk to me. Howard Bloom wrote a book. Uh, he's a guest uh, professor at NYU. Mm -hmm. He wrote a book called The Lucifer Principle. Okay. And he wrote another book called Global Brain. Okay. And he's founded a science called Paleopsychology. Which is basically okay. the study of thinking and thought from the time of the Big Bang up until now. That's very good. Paleo yeah. being old, old yes. thinking. Is is he prophesying a neo a neo uh, period or neo thinking um, or a you know, transformation as we look ahead in time? You know, a lot of what he does is more of a scientific expedition through. Uh, this is what it says as the subtitle to his yeah. book: a scientific expedition through the forces that have shaped history. But that's a pretty, and he, there's a lot of history. Yeah. Back to 13.7 yeah, billion years yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's, uh, 
You met up with him? You talked to him? I haven't met up with him yet. You haven't called no, him yet? No, no, no. Okay, you're uh, right. One of the guys in the uh -huh. Colors Project yeah. actually is uh, is friends with him. And okay. You know, we're, uh, like to link I'd up? Definitely that would like to link up with him. He's and keep leading me toward the things that you find oh, are good. Sure, What's absolutely. his name? Harold Bloom? Harold Bloom. Harold. I like Harold. Yeah. Howard. Howard, Har Howard Bloom. Excuse I should have known. Yeah. Harold is disappearing <laughs> yes. from the lexicon. Howard Bloom. Ha Harold yes. no longer exists, I think, as a He's name. He's got a documentary. There's a video on Google Video. Disinformation, if you type Howard Bloom, uh -huh. and disinformation, if uh -huh. you Google video, there's a 30-minute video with him. Okay. And it is amazing. Yeah. The guy is a madman. Okay. And okay. Uh, he's really fascinating. Yeah, that's um, an endearing term, madman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that with the Howard utmost Bloom, respect. I appreciate that. Anybody yes. else you got uh, down the pike? Or anybody uh, coming out of history, even, or what? You like Fuller? Uh, you're picking up on uh, Marshall McLuhan. McLuhan, is yes. he something else? Yeah. Um, I used to visit with him every spring. Oh, really? For about three years. I could never get close. He was really wired wow, in an interesting guy. way. He, he was really fantastic. Indeed. He had a brother wow. named Maurice who was yeah. more welcoming, but he would allow, he could sit in on the class. It was all poetics and Joyce and things. But oh he nice. was really an interesting time, helping to define what was going on at this very crucial period. Again, positing myself, positing that was a, major, a moment in terms of the zeitgeist. A qualitative transformative moment was that year, 1969-70, yeah. nice. that will be picked up on in terms of these... Uh, measurements of our capability of transcending oh, yeah, scarcity yeah, may be the the principal um, qualitative transformative event in the evolution of consciousness and it's not been picked up on yet but would be so qualitatively transformative of all our institutions and the basis for all kinds of uh, cascading transformations that would be liberating away from the threat of wiping out our whole species so absolutely uh, you know but it's not seen it should be on letters 24 feet high on Times Square, <laughs> right. and it's never mentioned. This is what we did at uh, Times Square. Well, this is yeah. what we did oh, in Times Square. Times we did Square our show. The colors yeah, uh, well, okay, well, let's go, let's flash forward to John Kowalski. Yeah, Me meeting John Kowalski yeah. in New York. Mm. Uh, met John, and uh, we started working on projects together, like mm -hmm. right off the bat. Mm -hmm. You're and, both uh, cyber guys. Yeah. I, and okay, yeah. we built a site called Prudentia. Had you, had you picked up the cyber stuff for yourself just on your own? Yeah, or years you ago. Had you gone to some ago. school or something? Uh, or anything, I went to Savannah College of Art and Design for, for video. For how long? For video. For four for years. Long? For four years. And yeah. you came in from a video site. Right? From video. And that and took you to cyber? While I was doing the senior project, yeah. I did a computer interactive CD-ROM of video. Okay. Video, it was a series of videos, and you would use these archaic symbols yeah. to navigate through right. these uh, different dream sequence video clips. Okay. And so it was you like put at that the all together. Absolutely. Enjoy and that? Truly. You really it yeah, was really it did, was really right? exciting. Yeah. Right. And that's what, you know, when I uh, after I graduated, yeah. I went out to LA uh -huh. and you know, I got a job in a video post production house. Yeah. And uh, started shopping that C D ROM around uh -huh. and eventually got a job working on the first two absolute vodka campaigns. Uh -huh. Which were actu actually uh -huh. really pioneering Okay. First one was yeah. about Kevin Kelly's mm. um, executive editor of Wired, his yeah, book right, Out of right, Control, right. Yeah. and the second one was about experimental animation, uh -huh. and that was with uh, 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 Christine Panushka was the uh, yeah, oh yeah, uh, she's yeah. an experimental animator, right, and so right. that was I mean both of them were like one was really technical uh -huh. and and uh, futuristic, and the uh -huh. other one was really organic well, yeah. and and artful and just really just beautiful so again autodidactically yeah. learning yeah. and so that's how i once that's you how i learned how to once do you got out on the field yeah. with the foxes you could really run with those hound yeah, dogs yeah. yeah right and you were doing that you were educating yourself you get to new york i didn't know how to do web design uh, when i started the job and that's how and i you learned you learn and absolutely. you learn and it's fun like a hound yeah. dog finds the fox right? absolutely okay and you did that and you ran into john john similar john moved into Kowalski john Kowalski Blue, yeah right? moved into the same building fiber whiz right yeah yeah. So we instantly start working on projects together, and uh -huh. over the course of several years, he's uh -huh. a dancer, yeah. and uh, I've, yeah. I'm a break dancer, and so I've been Are break you really? dancing. Yes, I've been okay. break dancing since I was a kid. Okay. And uh, so he gets me involved uh, with a show that's going on at the Merce Cunningham Theater. All right. And so um, I, that's my first time doing a performance a in a dance performance. All right. And uh, since then, uh, I've done a few others, yeah. and he. Uh, started getting together with my roommate who or my neighbor from across the hall right. and they were painting he was 
red and uh -huh. John was blue uh -huh. and I would go out and videotape it. Uh -huh. and, uh, Why were they red and blue? I mean, uh, just because, you know, uh, John was blue. John yeah. was blue. And yeah, he, well, and how he did he get to be blue? Why wasn't he magenta or why wasn't he green? Oh, why I don't know. We'll okay, have to okay, find out. Well, have to well, yeah, that's yeah. One, of, one of the mysteries so of nature. Yeah. He, um, he became blue. The other guy became red. Uh -huh. And I would go out and videotape them. Uh -huh. and, uh, Eventually, mm. we were at the Republican National Convention, <laughs> and we decided, and we were at, at Union Square afterwards, yeah. uh -huh. and we were hanging out, and yeah. we said, hey, let's go get some paint, and mm -hmm. let's all paint each other. Let's yeah. paint ourselves up. Uh -huh. So we went, and I painted myself up as you yellow. You did that for the Republicans, right? Yeah. yeah right, well, right. for the uh -huh. <laughs> Union Square, uh -huh. come yeah. on. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Republicans yeah. didn't no, care, I you know. know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, who knows? They um, wouldn't let us go to Central Park because we'd trample the grass. Right, that's what they the said, yeah. Never mind, go ahead. But, yeah. um, uh. So we went and did the performance there, uh -huh. and that was it. That was uh, it. That yeah, started the colors project. Yeah, that was. And that's and well, we called ourselves primary. Uh -huh. We called ourselves colors. Oh, I see. Right. You know, uh -huh. I mean, it, w it evolved. It uh -huh. kind of went through all these uh -huh. different iterations. And you have but all when this summertime video happened, yeah. Mm -hmm. When summertime happened, 2005, uh, John was living a few blocks from Times Square, and he right. said, I'm going to go out there every day at 4.30 and do a show. And no I said, kidding. He's got theater, yeah. like the Living Theater. Thing. Yeah. They used to perform in the Times Square all the time. Brilliant. Yeah. And I said, uh, you know what, maybe I'll show up and do that with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did once or twice, mm -hmm. and I decided it was a really good thing. Yeah. And I didn't paint myself the first couple of times. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, you and know, you I'm going to do this. And you were doing spontaneous stick or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, video? And at the time, were you at the time, video? No, no I wasn't. Then, at yeah. the time, I was uh, studying capoeira, which is a Brazilian martial art. Okay. That mm -hmm. it combines dancing and fighting. Okay. And right. it's a very beautiful display. I of, got a break dance. Yeah, yeah break right. dancing is very closely yeah. related. Okay, yeah. And uh, so I was doing a lot of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we decided to do this every Thursday at 4.30. Why Thursday? Just because tea that time. was, yeah, that was tea that was time. a good day. Yeah, tea that was time. good. Exactly. Thursday on tea time. And good. so good we started choice. doing that, and we did it every Robin. Thursday through the yeah. entire. Uh, Christopher Robin is <laughs> what my my middle name is Christopher. Is and when I was really? a kid, yeah. people would say, "What's your middle name?" And, Christopher, and I'd and say, say Christopher, "Christopher Robin." Robin right. right. Okay. Exactly. Well, all right. So um, anyway, so you're out there on Thursdays, 4:30, doing a steady stick, right? Every you every Thursday, yes. And what we would do? What would you do? We'd we'd walk out of the building and we'd part ways. Mm -hmm. and we'd meet up at a certain spot. Mm -hmm. So we would just kind of converge. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, we would and bring shock, and we would talk to people. And, and we was would it, would you pass out, leave, were you political at all? No, you no. It was just spontaneous. We just wanted to communicate with the people of Earth. Uh -huh. Because we're a bunch of aliens who oh, have been right. stuck on planet Earth uh -huh. for, you know, goodness knows, But didn't you come years. from another realm, from Prudenia? From Prudenia, it's yeah. another dimension. Uh -huh. He came here through a portal. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I've been stuck here. I uh, was on some kind of a been mission. Stuck on this I've been planet. stuck for 500 years. Yeah. And my thing is like, I'm trying to blend in. Yeah. You know, and I'm and this yellow guy. And try and understand. I'm, tr I'm oh. trying to blend in, and yeah. I'm a yellow guy. So uh -huh. I've got, I, I've, I've decked myself up, uh -huh. you know, in a black suit, uh -huh. black sunglasses, uh -huh. black hat, oh. you know, and I'm looking like a 1950s Times Square hustler. All know, right. Basically. Well, that's and that's bad. my and version of blending in. And we do, we actually do have a video here. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's you know, can we, have we got time. Listen, here's the story. We've got 48 in, so we've got 10 minutes to go. 10 minutes. Well, let's watch let's a little run, of the video. Let's run we can maybe talk five about that. Or so sure, like yeah. That. So let's run that. And this is what? What are we going to see? What we're, we're going to see is up. Times Square, I believe it is July 13th. What year? 4 30 p.m. 2005. Okay, this goes back and to uh, Let's run it, and we're going to talk over it. Yeah, yeah. And let's we give can it five minutes or sure. so, okay? And then we'll sure. talk. So and let's uh, run that tape now. If you can get it going, they're up and going. So if they don't get it, we ought to talk. Uh, Can you yeah. think of something to say until the tape starts? Uh, well, running? until then, yeah. you know, um, what then, happened was, we well, oh, this is Dr. M. Turner. This is actually one of my websites. This oh. is a self help website. Oh. And what I did Why here. Is this up there? Okay. Um, yeah, this, is, uh, this was on the Mac. Uh -huh. And what we were looking for was the DVD. Uh -huh. But what we have here is this is I, this is one of my audio sites. All right. And I'm the doctor. I'm uh -huh. Dr. M. Turner. Oh, I and see. And I can say, well, power, <laughs> popularity. No, it's actually the DVD player, the Pioneer. The DVD um, Pioneer player. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it's fine. This is one of your sites, though, right? Yeah, yeah. this is one of my websites. And yeah. it's and actually, that it you, looks, that's, that's me. That's you. And it looks like a self-help like website. Like a, yeah, I see. I see. And, uh, really and, and what it is, you know, it goes okay. through this. this is this uh, the DVD now? This is the DVD. Okay, this is the one we're going to look at. Is yeah. This one? Is this it? Yeah. Now, and this the is mixing is fantastic.
and uh, going back from there uh -huh. um, and, and, and putting it on the yeah and putting okay. that as the chroma putting key as a chroma, and right? cutting um, the video live yeah. here um, in the studio it's fantastic and when I'm doing you do that it with one little camera I mean you do it though. oh I do it with three cameras you do, but okay. I go I go into a trance uh, really and okay, talk. Yeah, yeah and when I'm cutting uh -huh. we have music going on and uh -huh. I start to get a vibe uh -huh. and I start to cut and everything's and going to the music on the set and they're right. saying things and, and they're, they're saying things and, and there's a character and yeah and so I'm trying yeah. to so I'm like, I tune into, uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's, it's an art form. It's a brother. meditation. It is a meditation. Absolutely. You maybe learn from that commute. Yeah, a your little meditation. bit, a little bit. Yeah. And I, I think that it's um, abstract expressionist. Yeah, video. it is. Or Dada, too. Uh, oh, absolutely. It's kind of Dada because it's, it's very Dada. Oh, know? yes. Oh, no, yeah. So it's art, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's also involving all the cyber stuff. And it's also yeah. involving the video. And surrealist, also. Yeah, and surreal, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I just read uh, about. Uh, the the birth of cutups yeah. and Tristan Tazara uh -huh. uh, pulling m writing a poem uh -huh. by pulling words out of a hat and reading them really? successively yeah. and a riot ensued. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is 1920 yeah, or something yeah, like that. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. this is this uh, is how revolutionary the idea of nonlinear thought yeah, was. Yeah. You know, at that time, that's a big it would thing cause we're going through now. <laughs> we're going nonlinear, and they're going yeah. back, and we're extending, and we're getting back to multimedia. We haven't had oh yeah. alphabet. We're getting back to multimedia. And we're having a revolution in terms of the computing. Carbon 60 is coming. They're going to have Carbon 60. Yeah. Now talk about this because yeah. I looked mm. this up on Wikipedia the other yeah, day. Yeah, right, right. And I found a lot of stuff that was yeah. really interesting. Yeah. But it was like, whoa, what is this? I mean, I felt like I'd, I'd better take like a, a chemistry class. No, or you don't have to come. It's just the thing that's coming. A small guy down. It's a great book. Incidentally, I'd recommend a book to one and all. It's called A Massive Change by Frank Mao, M-A-U, okay. and it's all at the level of design, yeah, and they got change. the fellow, he just died down in Texas, who discovered this thing. It's going to be the basis of all computing. It's really? going to be a molecular carbon-60 really? past the, the silicon chip, when they, it's in computing, is going to become qualitatively more powerful, and it's inexorable. It's where on the other side of the chessboard, you're doubling every time with the capability. It's going to be beyond Moore's law in the silicon. It's going to be based on carbon wow. 60. It's properties wow. for expand for uh, transmitting um, information or electricity are many times more. It's going to be exceed the, the the Moore's law. And it's probably going to kick in. I don't want to say when. Four or five years, something Amazing. like that. It's going to kick in, and it's the basis of all the nanotechnology as well. Which is and what I, you were bringing 60, me right up to. Carbon 60 is called Buckminster Fullerene because it's geodesic. Yes. And it was named and after that's this what the great uh, polymath Buckminster Fuller. Absolutely, yeah. the Fullerene. And it's, it's a hugely important thing, yeah. Yeah. And it's a little I saw over the, the uh, horizon in the future, right. but it's there. We should keep a track of and do anticipatory design science toward True. that thing that's emerging in the future. Now, one of the things that I was I was listening to an interview the other day with uh, Daniel Pinchbeck, and uh -huh. he's talking about how he recently was at Burning Man with a bunch of yeah. nanotechnologists, uh -huh. yeah. and the nanotechnologist yeah. pulls out a little thing yeah. and shows them yeah. a bunch of... Uh, sacred geometry on a nano scale nano that he scale. grew it's on a, a nano scale nano means a billion right, yes. yeah yeah and so mm. um, basically this guy is building he's he says that he can build any shapes uh -huh. and forms uh -huh. with nanotechnology yeah, right stronger and than steel and he yeah. he's saying you know we're going to be able to it's not build mm. we're going to be able to grow any yeah we're going to grow them, at yeah. any size he's like we're going to be able to grow skyscrapers yeah oh yeah you know like this is the way this is the way yeah. buildings are going to be made in the future yeah. so like the idea of having and to it's create it's this infinitely light and infinitely strong infinitely nearly. light I infinitely know, strong infinite, and 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 manufacture you think about, like, of our own design yeah if you think about the population explosion yeah. and the need to create a larger workforce to yeah. build buildings to create industry to do mm. all these things uh -huh. where that was um a model uh, of the past. evolutionarily mm -hmm. um, uh, required uh, required but yeah. it, you know it was a it was a kind of thing that would catapult our species uh -huh. you know all of a sudden when we're developing these new technologies mm -hmm. the idea of scarcity is mm -hmm. going to be the the, the 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 stronger genes you know well. like smaller families and and l smaller populations people that are contributing to that uh -huh. are going to be people that are actually a part of the the future, really. Well, you, a you, sustainable had, future. if I may, yeah, the sustainable, and you're able to do more with less through good design. The major thing yes. is if you just look at computers, they're smaller. Do more with less. You're doing more with less, less polluting. It doesn't you have to mean you have to build. It. 
more with less. Well, that's the, the ephemeralization of doing more with less through good design. Oh, yeah. And that's the essence of that. Designing and populations. And designing, the, if you can you know. get to the point where you're transcending the idea of scarcity, we're going to get to where the trying to put monetary value and all of the values now that are passed through the economic process, the understanding, economics, the allocation of scarce resources, we're going to get to a point where those conundrums that confront us and threaten us to destroy ourselves over those issues are going to be di uh, tra subsumed within a context where there is going to be sufficiency and more than sufficiency for all, even within an ecological context, if we make it. And we're at a test time of whether we're going to be able to make that transition rather than blow up the whole species. And, and you guys are really li out on the cutting edge of bringing some of that consciousness to the world thanks. through public access television and it's expanding now in, 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 in record terms. And one of the things that, you know, Buckminster Fuller talked about.